Bright and the groom, please. Can you look forward to this? Uh, the flower can go to somebody. Okay. Hallelujah. This is the most important aspect of this program. Beloved brethren, we are gathered here today before God and the congregation to join Brother Ofeyemi and Sister Molondia in holy matrimony. Marriage is an honorable status ordained by God for the fall of man, and it symbolizes the union of Christ and the church. That Christ sanctioned marriage is evident by the fact that he honored and invited invitation to a wedding in Cana of Galilee and he performed his first miracle there. Also, Apostle Paul pointed out that marriage is honorable among men. Therefore, marriage should not be rushed into to satisfy carnal lust. It has to be approached thoughtfully with dignity and the fear of the Lord. What are the reasons for marriage? First, marriage is for mutual fellowship. These two brethren have reached an agreement and are to be joined together now. Secondly, Marriage is to test the sinful life of adultery so that those not gifted to be continent can marry and thus keep themselves pure 
and quantified as members of the body of Christ. And thirdly, marriage is ordained for the purpose of procreation and raising children that will be loved in the fear of the Lord and abide with the teachings of the word of God and glorify his holy name. From the foregoing, therefore, if anyone has any reason or reasons why Brother Ophayeni and Sister Moro Dia should not be joined in holy matrimony, such a person should mention it now. If there is none, let everybody remain silent on this marriage forever. Amen. Now, both of you should realize that those joined contrary to the will of God are not acceptably joined together in the sight of the Almighty. Therefore, does any of you have reason or reasons why you should not be joined together in holy matrimony? Amen. Brother Ophayemi, do you engage this woman in marriage so that both of you will live together according to the will of God in marriage? Will you love her, honor her, counsel her, defend her, nurse her, as long as both of you shall live, will you forsake all other women and cling to her as your lawful wife as long as both of you shall live? Yes, I do. Sister Morogia, do you agree to the pledge of this man to be your husband so that both of you will live together according to the will of God concerning marriage? Do you love him, obey him, honor him, and know him throughout your life? Will you forsake all other men and flee to him alone as your lawful husband, as long as both of you shall live? I do. I can hear you. Yes, I do. Amen. Who gives away this woman in marriage? No longer yes. Bible, there is the Bible.
Holy Bible to the Word of God. The Bible is not the sword of the sword. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cling to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. As brother Fayemi and sister Morogia have agreed to be joined in holy matrimony, as they have confessed before God and before man, and back it up with the giving and receiving of the Holy Bible as an everlasting testament. Therefore, I pronounce them husband and wife, and they should both live together as of today in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, brethren, I present to you the newest couple in town, the newest couple in town, Mr. and Mrs. Pasteur, to you. As he who is taking out his hand, I pray that the Almighty God will do it. In all that you do, your marriage will stand in the mighty name of God. The love that has bound you two together will never be in the mighty name of God. And each time you look at this wedding ring, you will remember the date of it in the name of God. Thank you, Amen. Everything is created wonderfully, beautifully good. He saw that man was alone, and he said, It is not good that 
man should be known. I will create snake and earth made for him. And God made Adam to sleep, got a rib, and created fed the woman. And Adam named the woman Eve, which means woman. So today, that scripture has been fulfilled in your life because it is not good that man should be alone. God commanded it. And today, this is the bone of your bone and the flesh of your flesh. Adam needed the partner. Adam needed the Why? So that you can stand together and face the world. Today, you are together, you have come together as one that why you are one. You are going to face the world as a couple, as a world. You are not going to face the world as individuals again. You are going to face the world as Mr. and Mrs. Christ's son. One. In anything you do, in any decision you make, you are one. But the Bible says, we are no longer two, but we are one. Your word, your, your, your agreement, anything you do should be one, one voice. And I pray that God will make your voices to be one in Jesus' name. We will stand together, we will pray the word. We will find a common place for both parties. Marriage is also an avenue to demonstrate gratitude and appreciation in thoughtful ways. In so many ways, we thank God you have a partner. We thank God when things are happening, you there is somebody you can you know, you know you can go back to. You know you have you have a husband that you can go back to, you know you have a wife you can go back to, you know you have somebody you can share those things you can't even share with anybody with because you are one. And also it is an atmosphere through which both parties can grow. You will grow yourself. He said uh, one, one will take a thousand, two will put two thousand to flight. So you have your own shortcomings, you have your own shortcomings, but when the two of you grow together, you'll be able to help yourself. Where you are weak, she will support you. Where she is weak, you will support her. And together, you will make a good home. And I pray that will be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. And for these things to happen, there is something that you need to always have at the back of your mind. It is the four letter word N O D E, love. Love. I know it is because you loved yourself, that's why you agreed to get married. Please do not allow that letter, that word, to disappear. Now that you are married, in most marriages, when you get married, the word love is no longer there. When you see, oh, I don't know, so this is how you are. You know, so many, but when the love is there, you will not see your partner's weakness. You will not see your partner's faults because they said love covers so many things. The Bible says in First Corinthians 13, 4 to 7, we won't read it. It said, There are 14 principles of love which every couple must follow. One, love is patient. You must be patient with yourself. We all have shortcomings. We come from different backgrounds. So you'll be patient with him. You'll be patient with her. Now that you are living together, you begin to see some things you have never seen before. You need patience. Love is kind. You have to be kind to one another. Love protects. It is your duty to protect your wife. It is your duty to protect your husband. Love trusts. Trust is very important in any marriage. If there is love, there will be trust. And don't let anybody advise you because I know some friends you come, yeah, you want to trust woman, you want to trust man, love always trust. Love holds, love perseveres. Love does not envy. You don't have to envy your husband or envy your wife. Whatever God has given to your wife, it is for you. Whatever God has given to you, it is for your for your wife also. But the Bible says you are no longer two, but one. So you should not envy. Love does not boast. 
Now does not dishonor. You don't dishonor your husband. You don't dishonor your wife in the, in the presence of your friends or family member. And when they, they want to dishonor your, your partner, you will cover him or her. You will honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't let anybody dishonor your, your, your spouse. Always be there to honor them. Love does not easily get angry. Love does not keep record of wrongdoing. That was what you did last week. You did it last month. I'm counting now. Love does not keep record. And love does not delight in evil. Don't think evil about your partner. Don't think bad about your partner. Because you are going together, you are doing everything together, you are one. Don't pray for you to be greater than your partner. Don't pray for you to be richer than your partner. Because you are one. Hallelujah. And love is not proud. Love is not selfish. Those are the 14 principles of uh, love. When you get to read Corinthians chapter 13, 4 to 7, and God will help us in Jesus' name. So for the records, I always tell people this, your spouse is the most valuable asset you have after God. After God. The best thing that can happen to you as a man is your wife. The best thing that can happen to you as a woman is A lot of parents like to take sides. If there is a class or anything, don't take sides. Don't you? I will defend my daughter or I will defend my son. Don't take sides. Pray for them so that they can be successful. Parents, please pray for both parties. The church, you want to fellowship with them. As a church, you fellowship with them because they are members of the church. Let's fellowship with them. Let's pray with them. Let's make them happy. Let's make them feel valuable in the church. And for friends and relatives, please leave them alone. <laughs> That is the best advice. Let them be. Don't go and say, ah, hey, do you know what? I saw your husband somewhere at the supermarket. I saw your wife. The ways you don't know. You can be praying for them in your bedroom, in your secret. Pray for them, but don't try to cause confusion. Leave them alone. They saw themselves. They love themselves and they decide to get married. Don't be somebody that will scatter their marriage. 
So friends, relatives, please let them be. And as you let them be, shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Who keeps the family going? The wife. The woman makes the family to grow. Let somebody read Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4, so that the church can hear. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4, as I'm rounding up. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4. Hallelujah. Mm. Can you read it again, sir? A virtuous woman is the crown to her husband. You know when the king sits down, the, the, the most precious uh, thing that the king has is the crown. And the Bible says, you are the crown to your husband. You are a virtuous woman, you are the crown to your husband. Anywhere your husband is, you must only be proud of him. That is why you are the most important in the house. The woman is very important in the house. When a man has a good wife, you will see it in him. But when a man has a troublesome wife, you will also see it in him. He's not happy. He, would, he, would, he doesn't even want to come home. But when you have a good wife, you want to be at home. You want to be with her at all this because you, you, are, you are blessed. So you are a crown to our brother. And please don't let that crown fall. And you will not fall in Jesus' name. Therefore, first Peter chapter 1, verse 8. Talks a lot about a woman because of her time, we won't go into it. And then, in conclusion, Revelations 19 6 to 9 says there is going to be a wedding at the end of everything when Jesus Christ will come as the bridegroom to take his bride home. That is the most important wedding. Will you be here when Jesus comes? To take us as his bride, will you be qualified? How, do, how are you going to be qualified? By giving your life to Christ, by doing the will of God. So that when he comes at the end, you will be able to go with him. And I pray that on the last day, at the marriage of the Lamb of God, we will all be ready in the name of Jesus. Let's rise up on our feet. Let's rise up on our feet. Now we want to, oh, thank you. We want to bless the couple. Uh, please, if you are doing this, sir, please come forward. We want to pray for the couple. We want to pray for them. Quickly, quickly, we have uh, 15 minutes. Let's stretch our hands towards them and commit them to the hands of God. They are, they are starting a new journey, a journey they have never been in before. Before it is uh, introduction, now that it will be the body proper, that God will go with them in this journey. They will not fall, they will not fail. The enemy will not scatter your marriage in the name of Jesus. The love that has bound you together, it will not diminish in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall continue to go stronger and stronger in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall be well with you. You will never regret today in the mighty name of Jesus. And you shall be blessed physically, you shall be blessed matrimonially, you shall be blessed spiritually. In the name of Jesus, you shall be fruitful in your body in the mighty name of Jesus. By this time next year, it shall be a time for baby dedication in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father, my God. We cover your marriage and your wedding with the blood of Jesus. We spoke in the blood of Jesus. 
no weapon formed or fashioned against it shall prosper, and every tongue that wants to write against it, they are already condemned in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father and our God, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Right now, we want to go and sign the register while the choir will be singing. Uh, the bride, the bride's father, bride's mother, groom, groom father, groom mother. We will go out there to sign the marriage register. Then we'll come back and we close. Why are we ready? So, as the couple will file out, the daddies and the mommy will follow them. Then, we, then the official minister will follow them. And then we'll go and sign the register. So, you are going to come right there and go to